and we're back to another episode of let's play final fantasy 5 i'm your host here rpg guy and we've got two more two more little side quests left before we start approaching the inevitable end game um so we unlocked this guy earlier from the illusion for the town that's in the forest the illusion forest mirage forest whatever and with this black chocobo, we need to actually use him to get to a dungeon. Uh, uh. Which we are going to head to now. Because now we have all the major cool weapons unlocked. We have pretty much all that we would ever need. Okay, we don't want to go... Well, wait a minute, hold on. Yes, we want to land here. There we go. And so we're pretty much traversing this particular desert in search of the uber summons of the game. Nice. Ow. Oh. I mean, he's gonna die, but he kind of has to. We can't be having him lose his shit. Nice. You know what I might start doing? Kinda have to. Because her magic is now becoming so expensive. We need to do that. Um, whereas he can keep the ribbon, but he can also reverse status effects. So that's kind of the point. Use the cottage before we go into this wonderful, wonderful place. Let's do this. So, we have two paths to go. And there are wrong ways and right ways. That's all you need to know. There's a right way to go and a wrong way to go. But as long as you stick mainly to the to the right path, you have a lot less to worry about. So we may have just learned that, which would be really nice. Nah, because it actually has to hit. Yeah. That's a blue magic ma ma magic spell you can learn, so... so... If we pick the wrong one, we get attacked and I believe a random encounter, so... Actually, just to sh make sure... We can even experiment and try it out. Luckily, we should be able to kill Parthenop. Parthenop, yeah. Before we have to really worry about that. So here, you, here we go. The Bander, uh, Bander Corral. To which, problem solved. I like how they play that, that you know, the big bad music, but whatever. Not a problem. Not even worth the XP, really, either. See, there's the right way. And then, boom, goes the dynamite. We can go over here and grab that. And then we can actually encounter a relatively unique enemy down here. Um, of mild interest. That would be bad. He's the living dead. And it didn't even matter. Because they made a game with zombies in it. Um, we'll just use a holy wor worder. And because, again, the dancing doesn't count as straight up magic, I guess, for some reason. So the magic pots are interesting. If you wanted more expedited means of getting a abs you can actually get about 
about 700 apps here, but then you would have to burn through a crap ton of elixirs. But I'm gonna use one to show you. Anytime you fight a magic pot, just toss him an elixir. Yay, yippee! And then he runs like a bitch. And it doesn't show it because we have none there, but it gives us, they give us 100 abs each. Um, again, it's really up to you. These count as items, so I'm going to, I'm, there's an achievement where if you grab all hidden items, I might have, I'm going to go under the assumption these are hidden, these are all going to be hidden items. So I'm going to use them, per se. I'm going to make sure I complete each one, just to make them <laughs> happy. And not them layers of flare. And boom goes the dynamite. And there's going to be a pattern here where the left one is safe. Oh, no, never mind. Uh. Oh no, it was a random random battle. The left one is usually safe twice in a row, and then it's the right one. That's kind of the pattern that they do. So just keep that in mind. It's a constant pattern. And there's a lot of floors to go, so don't be intimidated also by that. Thousand shekels, some moon stars, and again, we'll elixir. So, yeah, you need to make sure you have at least six, seven elixirs on you. But we'll replace all, we'll replenish all of these later with uh, a means to do so at some point. So, you'll see the pattern actually happen again. Where it's going to be two lefts and a right. Left. Left. And boom goes the dynamite. There we go. One stars. Ooh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. That's bad. Let's make him happy. Yay, yippee. He gets the hell out of dodge. Phoenix down that we can't carry. 15 grand. And again, we'll keep going up. It should be fine. Again, the pattern repeats pretty much for the last for the second to last time give or take but you'll see what I mean by that it's not a literal you know variable I'm not gonna complain really
Oops. My bad. Kuz a beast. Nothing we can't really handle. Unless he's got shield on him, and then that'll just annoy me more than anything. And <laughs> he's down. I'm already losing track of, like, where I've been, kind of a thing. Not where I've been, but I'm losing track of, like, my patterns <laughs> in this dungeon. It's easy to do that, because it all just looks the same. Okay, so let's keep going. Now, this is the one time it's actually a little different, um, if I'm not mistaken. I believe this time it is going to be deal with this I need to stop fooling around. Uh, what the hell's my aqua spell? Oh, there it is. Because we got hit by Doom and changed the order of things. There we go. Yeah, because when they're zombie, they do whatever the hell they feel like. go to the left side. It's like the one floor that's different. We'll go back to the right side. Monchetti. Um, and then there. So we ace that one. Another fight. Pop of the elixir. So we've used what five of these, maybe five or six. And we get the Avis Killer, which again is a, I believe it's a stagger, but I could be wrong. I don't even see it here. Oh, oh no, it's a bow. It's again, and it's effective against flying bird-like enemies. 25 grand. And then it's back to the original format. So it's just that one floor that's kind of different. And they're doing it mainly to screw with you. Again, so there you go, as you can see. Missile. That's all she wrote. Just to give you an idea. Again, these are all enemies I believe that we we will fight later in the game. As we are almost out of here. 
We, of course, get attacked by Concentrated Rage. coming from? They're coming from outside somehow. Oh boy. I just noticed them. I'll have to deal with them in a moment. It's only one or two. They're just wanderers. They're looking for food. Instead finding death from me as I see them. Isn't that annoying when you get ants and you don't quite know where they're coming from? And they're not like in a like in a, in a row like wandering. They're just kind of in your area. Like randomly, I, I I was always told as a kid that it's, it's them searching for food. They're sending out the scouts. Again, we don't have a choice in the matter with this, but we do murder him like the rest. I have to keep my eyes peeled to see if maybe they found something somewhere. <laughs> okay, so one battle you just can't avoid. So, that's just the way it goes. Here are you. Is this Windrake? Is this the Windrake that saved you? Die. No, I missed him. Here you, what are you doing? He says he wants to help you. Here you! Oh my god, he's on fire! Nina, here you knew you didn't have much longer to live. That means in the forest, when he saved me, it seems he came to this tower so he could use the last of his strength to help you. Here you. What do you mean? Mother's not going to make it. Dear, the doctor did his best. It seems the only thing that can cure her is a Windrake's tongue. Lena, where are you going with that knife? Certainly you don't mean to. Stop! Sire, I'll go. <laughs> Princess Lena, kill him and you'll kill the last of the Windrakes. What's more? The Queen Mother has always cared deeply for Hiryu. Will you still cut out his tongue? No. Princess, your father used to come here every day, just as conflicted as you are now. But perhaps you made the right decision. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> the 
But when Drake Hiryu became a phoenix and, entrust, and entrusted his strength and soul to Lena, receive the summon monster phoenix. Hiryu, thank you. <laughs> it's so sad. So the phoenix is interesting. It attacks enemies with fire and revives one KO'd party member. So now two characters have the means to, three characters have the means to fully pick someone up off the ground. The only one that can is Ferris, which that's probably not going to be a big deal. <laughs> Because he can use a phoenix down, but the idea is that we've got everybody kind of covered. But we're not out of the woods yet. We still got another summon uh, to aquasize. So we're going to head kind of up here to the north. Into the northern area here. Kill all these big bads here. There's no means to really get over there any quicker than just kind of walking, walking it. Let's go ahead and use a cottage. And this is going to take maybe a couple of attempts here, but if you know why we're here and you saw earlier in the game, we're going after Bahamut. And um, he's an easier said than done fight, but he's a gimmick fight more so than anything else for the most part. There's nothing really that fascinatingly interesting that goes on uh, with him. So we're just powering through here against some lackluster enemies that we've pretty much already decimated over the course of the game. And there's going to be a save point once we get closer to the top of the mountain here that we definitely are going to have to utilize. Because what ends up happening is, is that you just end up getting blasted pretty much to death. Um, one thing that we can do in the fight, though, is to, to benefit us is we can set up a healing kind of format where Lena is feeding Cryly high potions or feed, feeding Ferris with high potions. And whenever necessary, Ferris will white wind. And now why is that important? Um, is because we got to feed ourselves Carbuncle off and on throughout the fight. Um, and again, much like many Bahamu fights in other games, you can reflect his Uber attack, which is pretty much what we're doing for lack of a better term. And so, because that's what we got to do in order to survive the fight, that's what we're going to do. But he, he starts hitting us with AoE attacks and stuff, so we kind of want to dedicate two characters to that. And um, Cry actually, it should be Cryly popping the healing items to Ferris, and Ferris using White Wind. Because White Wind, I believe, is, is, um, can get through re Reflect. And if you have Carbuncle, you're in a good spot. If you don't, you'll have to reflect as many characters as you can and hope that it sticks around long enough. Because it does, from my note, my from what I've observed with it, it doesn't always stick around. So you're kind of at the mercy of the game to, you know, figure it out, so to speak. And so hopefully it never comes to that. But so we're hoping for just a pretty straightforward fight here but like i said sometimes it can just go upside turn upside down on you you know and we're gonna start the battle also by putting up uh some other stuff haste -ga. before we put up carbuncle we'll put up haste -ga, mighty guard pretty much the usual suspects
It's kind of funny how that piece of land is shaped like the Windrakes. You who have broken the seal, if you can best me in battle, I shall reward you my power. Uh, mother. <laughs> okay, let's do this. All right, so spell blade, flare blade. We'll put it on Ferris too, because any free rounds he has will be beneficial to us. Actually, we will put up um, mighty guard first. <laughs> Kind of an idiot not to do that. Hold up. Killing more ants with my bare finger. Um, let's put up Golem this round. Then we'll put up Carbuncle next round. I got, I got plans. That way, Cryley can heat AOE heal if we need it. Here we go. So yeah, anytime we don't need to heal with Ferris, he will get to attack with flare swords. See how this plays out for us. There he goes. <laughs> it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> Remember, our our classes are maxed out, but not our levels. These are pretty normal levels to have at this point of the game, I guarantee you. Um, but the, because of the way we set our characters up, our, their stats are just jacked up because of the job powering and the fact that we straight up have the means to do this. We could have actually come here almost at any point, and this would have been a much more difficult battle. But as you can see, we pretty much just decimated the guy. So 66, a 33 MP to summon Bahamut, which is the best offensive summon in the game. Um, but yeah, let's get the hell out of here. We've done our due diligence, as one would say. Um... So, yeah. Uh, okay, let's get a go ahead and head back to the Black Chocobo so we can head back to our airship, so we can head back to the Mirage Town thingy place, and we can, we can gear up rather well. We will enjoy this. Get some! Yeah. Pretty expensive, but also very good. Um, just head north, roughly. Because, yeah, we've got some work cut out for us coming up. And it'd be better if we were relatively prepared. No more need for the Black Chocobo. Let's head over here. Remember, it's a chance that we find the town, I'm, I believe. things that need to be done. Take some healing.
I'll come back to that elixir in a moment. There is no reason, really, for us to sit on any cash that I can actually think of. Because at this point of the game, we're getting, in a sense, to endgame. And then it becomes a question of, well, is there a purpose for, for cash? The answer relatively is no. There's not really going to be a need for uh, cash of any kind. And constantly worrying about cash is going to be a, a redundant kind of or silly thing to do because there's just no reason for us to consider any money because we're just going to have a slurry of boss fights coming up so we may as well boom shock shakalaka now you might argue that we could buy some shurikens and whatnot but we've never even we have never really used them at any juncture here of the game and how are we doing on Fum fuma shurikens anywho if i wanted to use them fuma shurikens 32 regular shurikens 98 we've only i think used one shuriken in the entire playthrough we have a lot of random items kind of floating around gear wise but again it all is just kind of subjective to what you what you need and what you want and there's not much more like again we don't have any grinding we have to do we've mastered all the jobs unless you're playing like one of the other versions that has bonus classes i believe there's a couple versions that utilize like three extra classes i remember one of them being cannoneer or something but i don't remember the other two might have been oracle and something else but ultimately there's no purpose um we don't have to level up any more classes so as far as i'm concerned we are done power leveling we don't have any grinding to do we're not level 50 which i would prefer but ultimately we have more than enough cottages to in the final area when we get to some save points so i believe there are a handful of save points in the final dungeon which is a massively long dungeon if I'm not mistaken, I believe we can leave. So there, there's a means to leave, but I could be wrong. But regardless of how that plays out, it's not really a big, big deal. Um, we have more than, but I believe there are save points and stuff. So because of that, we can save. I want to get characters to level 50 before the final battle, um, which would be optimal. But the best XP is not going to be, um, it's not going to be out here. It's going to be in there. And so it's going to be quite a journey to get through the final dungeon. So I want to say with that said, thanks for stopping by, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv, subscribe our studios for more live gaming action. Because guess what? When we come back, we're heading into the void. And it's going to be the, in well, the or the, what is it called? The interdimensional rift, whatever. We're going to be heading into that weirdness. And uh, we're going to see how it goes because it's gonna get pretty crazy. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. And again, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we will see you guys next time.